life is one thing and then in an instant it becomes something else. Like here I am, Mia, the girl who thinks about the cello and Adam and just like that. After a life-changing car accident, teenager Mia Hall experiences an out-of-body experience and must decide if it's worth it to wake up out of her coma and face a life far more difficult than she ever imagined. If I Stay is based on the hugely popular novel by Gail Foreman, and we're so thrilled that she, along with actress Chloe Grace Moretz, who stars as Mia in the film, are here with us on GMT this morning. Great to see you guys. Thanks, Welcome. Thank you. Is it bad to say I cried like a baby? I did not expect to cry, but I cried so so much throughout this film. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a lot of things, this film. First of all, were you happy with the way it turned out? I was very happy with the way it turned out, because crying is part of it. There should be like some kind of new rating, like PG-13, <laughs> no eye makeup, and Kleenex. Yeah, I was going to say, bring yeah. a disclaimer that you have to bring some <laughs> sort of a Kleenex or something like that to wipe away the tears. Do you think it stayed true to your novel? Definitely. You know, when you are, I think as an author, what you really want is for the characters to make the transition to the right. screen and really for the emotional experience of the, of the novel to make the transition. And that, that's a tough thing. And I think they, 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 they manage it on every level. The characters feel so much like the characters in the book. The music really comes alive. And the emotional experience, all the feels, as we say, really comes through. Absolutely. I think the story, though, is so many things. It's a, it's a love story. It's drama. It kind of makes you realize that the life you're comfortable with and that you have today may not necessarily be there tomorrow. Was there something specific in your life that inspired this story for you to write this? There were lots of things that, in, that inspired it. I mean, part of it was based on somewhat of a true story or a true story, which is that um, I had friends who were killed in an accident similar to the one that happens to Mia, and it got me thinking about all kinds of things. But then also sort of like music and love and being a parent, and a, a lot of the, the story is about the kind of sacrifices parents make for their kids without Absolutely. even thinking about it. So that just happened when I became a parent myself. Yeah, as a parent myself, I loved the role these parents played in the film. And Chloe, you played Mia, the main character in this movie. I got to ask, had you read the book? Before you were cast um, in this movie? I read the book pretty much simultaneously okay. um, as I read the script because the original script was um, kind of a baseline kind of structural take from the book. And so when I met with the director, R.J. Cutler, we had all these notes on what we needed the Mia from the book to be in the story because that was our, you know, that was our main kind of Bible of what we had to go by. Right. And, um, yeah, I, I fell in love with the story of Mia and especially in the novel, it was just perfect and I just really wanted to do it justice and you know the fans of the story I wanted them to to not feel disappointed when they walk into the movie theater yeah you did a great job portraying this character I Thank but you. tell us more about this character because I thought essentially in a way you're portraying two different people one is the Mia who's happy-go-lucky has a lot to look forward mm -hmm. to she's falling in love and then the other one is experiencing this out-of-body uh, experience where she's experiencing heartache and loss and mm -hmm. trauma. Yeah. Was that difficult to play both those very different people? It was difficult because, you know, it was kind of like two different Mias, as you say. I mean, you know, the beginning is this girl falling in love who has everything to look forward to. You know, maybe Juilliard, maybe Lewis and Clark. You know, she's a premier cellist. You know, she has, she lives a very charmed life with, with a lot of love. Um, and then, you know, Nobody this big catastrophe happens, this, this huge tragedy, and she begins to learn what true loss is and yeah. what pain is. And, and what is confusing to her is she can't feel any physical pain anymore, so it's all emotional, and she's almost trapped inside of this, this being, this entity that she doesn't even quite understand why she's there or how she can get out of it. So it was um, a really emotional process to have to play, A, falling in love, yeah. which is a, a whole other thing on its own, <laughs> and then B, you know, the loss of, of your family and your life as you know it. Speaking of falling in love, you're only 17 <laughs> years old, and I was wondering, had you ever done a love scene before in a, in a movie? You've done a lot of movies, but... No, yeah, I, I never, you know, I, I'm only 17, and so yes. I'm finally at that age where I'm doing stories about people falling in love and et cetera, et cetera, and it's just kind of slowly but 
surely getting to that point. And is that weird with all those cameras around? Uh, it is weird. It's it got to be weird, right? Because you're friends, and there's like a big camera there with like 400 crew <laughs> yeah. members, and you're like, this is awkward. Especially at 17 years old. Yeah, yeah, when you're already self-conscious. No, no, Kate. It, it, are you experiencing your first love, or have you already? Um, I, I, I may I have think... read something over the weekend that you may be involved with the eldest Beckham son. Oh, my. Is there any truth oh to that? Oh, my. I have no idea. Oh, my gosh. You got me, you got me live right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're um, blushing. That may tell us enough right there, oh right? Um, you, you've been in so many films and, and a wide vast of different kind of films. You can stop blushing now. <laughs> from, from the Amityville Horror to I Didn't Even Know You Were the Little Girl in the animated film Bolt. That's your voice. And, and then bringing back the classic horror film Carrie. What was that like to bring back such a classic? Was there a lot of pressure to do it justice? Um, yeah, I mean, again, you know, it was really, what was, what was the main pressure was having to live up to a Stephen King novel. You know what I mean? It's such an iconic novel, and we really wanted to make the retelling of that very genuine, you know, and very honest. And, and the first retelling was so brilliant and so acclaimed. So we really just wanted to, to kind of keep it linear with the book and really tell the true story because... You know, we had the means and the CGI and everything else to be able to go that deeply into the sci-fi element of it. So, well, we want to thank the two of you for coming on. <laughs> uh, it'll be uh, interesting to see if the second novel, because this was part one of two, if that becomes a movie as well. We shall see. We shall see. Okay, thanks, guys. Thanks, thank Gary. you. Thanks for coming on. If I Stay hits theaters August 22nd, and you can meet Gail and Chloe today at North Park Center. They will be at the North Court area between Macy's and Nordstrom's. That's from three to four o'clock this afternoon. Mike, over to you.